but today we're going to start with H244, and that is a bill authorizing the natural organic reduction of human remains. And for those of you who are new, probably even by a couple of terms here, um, part of our portfolio is housing for the dead, and that includes cemeteries. Um, alternative cemeteries was something that we did two years ago or four years ago or six years ago. We did, I believe, Representative Howard and Walls, you were here for, um, um, for alternative cemeteries and uh, natural burials. And um, this is a different take on that. And in the past, we have also, not necessarily this committee, but the state has approved um, alkaline hydrolysis, which is something I learned about 12 years ago in this committee, which is basically um, a different form of, um, of uh, disposing of remains instead of, instead of flames for cremation. It's using a lye bath, which is very familiar to farmers, uh, disposing of large animals. But this is something completely different and um, Representative Partridge is here to introduce this bill to us. We will also hear today from on H290, which is an act relating to ski area operators and skiing accident reports. And there's a reason why we have that bill. Uh, and then an, an act relating to modernizing our wage and hour laws, which Representative Kalaki will introduce and Damien will take us through. And then I'm introducing H85 which is an act relating to requiring employment breaks. So uh, with that, Representative Partridge, welcome. Welcome back. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you so much committee for being willing to hear my testimony, my introductory testimony on H244. I, we, uh, Representative Lippert and I actually introduced this bill last biennium and uh, we're introducing it again with others, and we're hoping that perhaps, uh, obviously not this year, but perhaps next year you would be able to take it up. And uh, I guess I should explain to start with that I am a farmer. I raise sheep and goats and chickens, and I, you know, there is a practice that is done in agriculture where you can compo compost um, animal remains. And I've always been impressed with how incredibly efficient the process is in terms of reducing animals to really beautiful soil. And as the chair of agriculture and forestry, I'm also really taken with organic matter and, and introducing it into the, into the soil and what a positive uh, result that has in, in terms of um, water retention in terms of, of drought resistance, et cetera, et cetera. So this is sort of just a kind of a sideline to that. This is actually, um, you may all be appalled, but I once told my husband that if he could manage it and he could just, if I predecease him, if he could just put me in the manure pile and let me decompose, I would be very happy with that because um, I'm, not, I, I'm not interested in being embalmed and buried. I'm not particularly interested Though I do raise sheep, I'm not interested in being uh, buried in a wool casket, which they, they make, and I could probably make myself. Um, and I'm not interested in being melted in a lye bath. Um, and I guess my choice has always been cremation, given the possibilities that exist now. Uh, but we're also realizing, and by the way, I did send to um, your committee assistant two articles that I understand are posted on your webpage, and I, I would encourage you to look at them. Um, <clears throat> in, in one, um, it gives this detail that in 2015, cremations outpaced burials for the first time in United States history. And uh, I can understand why that is, takes up less land. Um, it's for me, it's a little more palatable than, you know, moldering in the ground. Um, but it also, um, it, in 2016, it was determined that cremation releases 600 million pounds of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. And so um, there are 
there are three businesses now in Washington State. Uh, it became legal last year. Uh, it, was, it was passed in 2019 to allow natural organic reduction. And these companies have, um, have sprung up. Um, they are, two of them I think are Herwood Woods and, um, and Recompose. And <clears throat> what H244 would allow to happen in the state of Vermont is just to allow this practice to occur. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's a good alternative. Uh, I encourage you to look at the articles. Uh, the one from uh, Wood Wood um, is, it gives you kind of a, um, they, they show you, although they, they have pictures, but they don't use a dead body. They just show you how the process happens and the fact that you end up with um, four 55 gallon drums of usable compost at the end of the, of the um, process. And this, this uh, compost can be used on your garden or you can donate some of it to Herland Forest, um, and they use it to grow new trees in the cemetery. So I am happy to try and answer any questions you might have. Uh, I, I think the idea is a good one. Uh, I, and by the way, I understand it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to have this happen, um, but I think it offers us another opportunity to have a process at the end of our lives uh, has less impact on the, our carbon footprint and potentially actually nourishes the earth. So with that, uh, happy to try and answer any questions. The, um, so our, th this proposal is based on the Washington law or is it just our interpretation of that? That uh, it's based on the Washington model uh, and uh, Mr. Chair, it it is 50 pages long. I haven't, you know, like I, I think that there are a lot of um, there are a lot of things that have been included in here that just sort of update the statute uh, in terms of terminology and what have you. But it also expands and allows the um, the use of natural organic reduction. That's no, that's fine. I, when I saw that it was a 50 page bill, I'm assuming that there was some cleanup in there. It's been exactly. cemetery. Cemetery statute is much like it, it's as dusty as some of our other ones. Um, I don't even have a good pun for it right now. Um, <laughs> Too bad, darn. <laughs> no, I just have an ongoing bit about what happens in mausoleums, but that's different than than this um, don't bill. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. <laughs> so the. Um, uh, well, we have several questions here. I'll just I'll just go to committee here. Um, Representative Murphy, then Triano. Thank you, Chair Stevens, um, and welcome, Representative Partridge. I am just thinking. I have not read through, and so I don't know the details. But when I was on our development review board, we permitted, um, and I may not be using the correct word, but harrowing of large animal carcasses, horses, et cetera. And they would build great um, burrows of, of dirt up over. And it's a time evolution thing where in the end you have compost. And so I'm kind of connecting it to that. And um, I realize a human body is not to be equated with that of a large animal other than in the sense of this natural decomposition. So no offense intended to folks, but it just, seems like a natural process of reusing the bits of us we don't need anymore. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Representative Murphy. And I really appreciate that. Uh, that's, that's basically how I feel about it. Um, and it would, it would, this bill would not allow my husband to take me out and bury me in the manure pile as I would really like to have happen. Um, but facilities could be developed. Uh, they basically have a what's uh, it's, it's a cradle. You can look at these articles. They're pretty, pretty explicit about how it works. They, um, they surround the body with, I think it's 200 pounds of, of wood chips and they do a rocking uh, motion over time. And 
I've, I've actually talked to folks at the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets because I said, wouldn't, wouldn't the bones be left? But apparently if you keep it at just the right temperature, even the, the bones are reduced. So, um, so it's really quite a complete process in terms of reducing uh, our bodies to um, lovely compost. And do you find, did, did, has it been too soon to find out that the difference between, let's just say I have, let's say I died of cancer and I fought the cancer for years, I'd have lots of chemo in my bodies, right? I, you know, the breakdown of, of something like that, has that proven to be, could that be a problem? I don't know if anyone who, you know, again, everybody makes personal choices, but, you know, if the, if the, if there's, chemicals in the body like that, I think has always been a concern in normal burials. Um, would that be an issue here? That, you're that is of? mentioned, that is actually mentioned in one of these articles and I'm not finding it quickly, uh, but it is something that they are looking at. Um, I know in the, um, the Herland, is it Herland uh, Wood um, article, they talk about the fact that there are fillings that, um, let's see. Oh, maybe I can find it. Hold on just a second. It says, um, humans tend to have a lot of unnatural materials in their bodies, though like dental fillings, screws, and pacemakers, that all has to be filtered out after the bulk of the decomposition is done. They, um, oh, okay, so they also crumble up the bones to release the phosphorus after that. Patrick says they'll have four 55 gallon drums of usual, usable compost. The family can take all of it or donate a portion to Herland Forest where it will be used to help grow new trees in the cemetery. Uh, I think it's the other, I think it's uh, the, the article regarding that focuses on recompose that addresses some of the um, um, uh, cancer issues and, and the the substances that might be in bodies that are, um, you know, of people who have potentially died of cancer and other other ailments. Representative Trano. Thank you, Chair Stevens. Um, I'm seeing some real business opportunities here. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, I'm with you. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do we have a notion as to the time frame that this, uh, that we're looking at it, something like this, Carolyn? Well, you know, Chip, um, it passed in Washington in 2019 and last year it went into effect and, and it's now early 2021 that these places are up and running. I don't know exactly what the time frame was, but I think once it got past some of these companies actually got going on on setting up their businesses so you have a rough idea of what the the time frame might be yeah okay all right representative bloomley yes hello chair partridge thanks for coming to our committee um i am i'm wondering so <clears throat> Uh, where, where do people, you know, I mean, what's the range of objections to this? Um, you know, when people oppose this, what's besides, well, I mean, I don't even know that funeral directors would oppose it, but I, I'm just wondering, you know, what, what are the concerns that have, that have been raised in the, in the past about this? I haven't really heard, thanks for the question. Um, I haven't really heard any objections other than what is referred to in one of these articles is the yuck factor. Um, you know, clearly this is not for everyone. It's, um, it's something, it's a matter of choice. Uh, not only, not everyone feels the way I do about this. Um, there might be, um, there might be some concern on the part of funeral directors who would rather see people come to their facility and be embalmed and be, um, you know, buried in a very expensive casket, et cetera, et cetera. So from a, I, I haven't heard that, but I can, I'm just sort of trying to think it 
out and envision it. And I would say that that might be one of the objections that would happen. But um, given the fact that, you know, uh, all burial also has its share of uh, expense and and carbon footprint, what have you. I think uh, when you think about um, caskets and what have you, it, it. I think that this is just an alternative. No one's saying you have to do, do this. You have the choice. I just want to have the choice. Thanks very much. Sure. Representative Plasic. You're muted. Thank you. I tried to hit the space bar to make it quicker. When I did, I lost what I was looking at here. Anyway, the, the waste, the organic waste reduction facility, and I had kept that page open so I didn't mess that up. I think that's what it's called. So Representative Partridge, um, how many, approximately how many of these facilities would be located in Vermont? That, or in other words, how many do you think Vermont would need? Um, I, you know, I have no idea uh, how many would be needed. And I don't know what the population of Washington state is. They have three at this point. And I'm gonna guess that their population is significantly more than ours. Um, it might be the same level as the number of um, crematories that exist. Um, I think it would be all that the market would bear. And I think that, you know, because we have neighbors all around us, it might, you know, somebody who wanted to do this, if it wasn't legal in the states of New York, Massachusetts and New Hampshire, people might want choose to come here. You know, it might be a, an, as, as uh, Chip said, it might be a great business opportunity. Okay, and, and I haven't had a chance to read that 50 page bill yet. I got the first five or six pages and I didn't really get the answer to my next question, but which, which would be um, in, related to what you had said earlier, when, uh, I think you said a 55 gallon drum and you might get four, four drums of compost from a situation like this. So again, not having read the red bill, but I'm gonna I'm gonna believe that if if I died and I decided that prior to death of course that I wanted to go to one of these organic waste reduction facilities and have my remains be turned into compost. And how long that would take, I don't know, but it's really not that important right now. When that's over, I believe then my remains would be packaged somehow and could be transported to, and my, and my wife is not in hearing range right now, so I can say this, uh, back home to my wife so that if she wanted to put my organic remains somewhere such as um, a garden, flower garden, vegetable garden, whatever. She has both and they're very nice. She could do that. It, it, is that correct? It, it'd be the same thing to me as a, 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 crematory, a, a crematory. You would get an urn of ashes, but here you're gonna get barrels or bushels or whatever you wanna call it of organic remains. And then it would go back to the, perhaps the next to can or whatever, or something in the will or something for that person to do what they felt they cared to do with the remains. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and I think that uh, I would envision this to work similarly to what happens in Washington state. And I, I think I just read you from one of the pieces that um, you can accept all of the all of the compost, or you can choose to donate it to, um, in this case, I think it was Herland Wood, um, to Herland Forest, to use to cultivate new trees and in their cemetery. So there are, you know, you don't have to take all four 55 gallon drums if you don't want them. You know, that would be, I think that that would be my, you know, what I would like to see happen. 
Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you. Sure. Representative Kalaki. I think you're Thank muted. You, sir. You're muted. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so currently, if you pass before your husband, he could not bury you on your own land? Well, that that's an interesting thing. And I think probably Mr. Chair knows more about this than I do, but I believe that you can be buried uh, on your own land, but it depends on the town you live in. In my hometown of Wyndham, uh, we can be buried on our own land. Um, it involves, uh, well, I suppose, I, th I think at this point, there are rules about having a fence around the area where you're buried. I know my brother-in-law unfortunately died a year or so ago and he is buried on um, my, my niece's land. They had to put a fence around it. There are certain guidelines that are involved with that. Um, I don't necessarily want that to happen. I would just like to be broken down uh, and, and thrown on my garden. And that is not a possibility at this point. Because I, I, I'm used at the horse farm I'm at you know, for the last 11 years, we've had to lead some of the horses out the pasture and bury them. Um, and, you know, to me, that's the organic process. Mm -hmm. And eventually those bodies do break down. Mm -hmm. And so wouldn't your body in fact organically break down in your field? But I'm not really, I mean, um, yes, it would. Um, yeah. But there are certain guidelines around doing that kind of a burial um, that I would prefer not to have to have. I don't want to. I don't want to set aside a plot back on my, you I, know, at the end of my garden where it has to be all fenced in and stuff. Perfect. Now I understand the difference. Okay. Thank you. And I'm sorry. I don't know all the guidelines of, around that um, that green burial um, restriction, but. Um, but that's my position on it. Okay, thanks. Sure. And not all towns allow, I don't believe, for this kind of burial either, so. Great, okay. Yeah, I don't think I can bury or be buried in our backyard, but then we're adjacent to a cemetery, so that would be, you know, <laughs> it, that wouldn't apply for anything except for the for the for the punchline. But the idea is um, in more, more rural areas, and, and each town might have separate registration needs. Um, you have to let people know where people are buried. Um, natural burials, even still, that's, that's slightly different. But um, this is this is a little bit different than that. This is this is close to having your your ashes scattered, and so it's just allowing for the process to happen. Representative Hango. Thank you. Someone asked earlier, and I, I missed who it was, what the objections to this might be. I do want to bring up that there are religious objections to this. The Catholic Church has spoken out and get against it, um, just as they don't, they used to not wish folks to be members to be uh, cremated, although that's now allowed. However, the spreading of ashes is not allowed. So um, there are you know, certainly religious objections in the United States and worldwide to this process. Um, I find it a little bit disconcerting to keep talking about the disposal of large animals and humans in the same subject since I've had to bury a horse and numerous dogs on my property. So um, uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say today, but nice to see you, Madam Chair. Good to see you too, Lisa, and uh, please say hi to Sharon when you see her. Um, and, and I would just say, I would respond to that with you know all respect that, um, as I've said probably at least three times, this is not for everyone. This is a matter of choice and I totally respect any other religion's um, uh, position on this. I just think that this allows for some of us who might not be Catholic to, to make that choice. 
Um, I'll also say, you know, with um, uh, certain religions require the, the burial of a body within 24 hours. And, um, you know, I appreciate that too. So to each his own. Representative Trano. Yes, as I recall, one of the conversations around being buried on your property was um, when you sell the property and how do you keep that plot in perpetuity um, after the uh, after it's passed on. So, um, you know, my neighbor did that. And um, fortunately, another neighbor bought the property and has agreed to, you know, keep um, a little fenced area with the uh, with the grave in it. Um, so, but I, I don't, you know, I mean, if you sell to a developer, <laughs> your remains are gone. <laughs> so um, that was one of the conversations I recall taking place around the uh, backyard burial. Yeah, there are protections in place and there are, are notice requirements to be made. Um, this came up. 12 or 12 or so years ago as well, just like what happens when there's an ancient um, family plot in the back corner and somebody wants to um, build their house bigger or build it at a different place or do some development. What are the notice requirements? Who do you have to contact? How many you know weeks do you have to paper? Um, you know, who do you have to track down from the family? You know, those things are handled somewhat, I don't want to say inconsistently, but they're handled in, in ways that, um, but then if you can't easily find a relative, yes, you, you can dispose, you can move the remains. Um, it's a, you know, it's a sensitive subject for obviously for a lot of people and, and um, as is the disposition of remains period. Well, when they were building the uh, addition on the St. Johnsbury Courthouse, they found an old cemetery when they excavated for the uh, for the foundation, and um, it delayed the project considerable time. Each um, skeleton was treated very uh, reverently, and they were excavated and moved uh, to a cemetery. And I remember looking out the window and seeing an entirely entire family, uh, husband, wife, and two children, one on each side, holding hands in the grave. It was very, very interesting, uh, but they were all moved very reverently and uh, put in another place and uh, that was um, taken care of. It didn't delay the construction project, but it was very interesting to watch. And, and that speaks a little bit to the difference between, you know, European burials and, and indigenous burials as well. Um, indigenous folks tend not to be as, as um, in in our in European cemeteries, but that each each body that's found has to be um, studied. Now, you know, it would slow it down. Archaeologists would come out and determine who what what remains were European and what remains were were indigenous. Um, all right. Any further questions for Carolyn right now? We're not going to go through the fifty pages, um, and if we do. Um, if we do pick this up, there will be, I'm sure, um, cabaret style puns to be made, but I think at, at heart, it is an important, you know, it's a we have to deal with it respectfully because it is something that is um, how we disposed of our loved ones is not, a, is not um, a light matter. And, and we'll take it up in in that spirit of knowing that if we do make changes to the statute, that it'll be done um, respectfully. Well, thank you for thank joining you. us. And um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I really appreciate. It. Thank you, Committee, for your time. Um, it's uh, it's really a pleasure to see you all. I'm I'm interested in getting back to the State House eventually, so I can see you all in person. Um, because this is a little different, um, but thank you for um, for hearing about H two forty four. Thanks, Carol. Thank you.